Hello and welcome to another episode of Node School. In this episode we'll be looking at seamless textures, so we've been focused on procedural so far, and now I'm going to talk about seamless, and I'll be explaining how you can create fairly complex materials with just one seamless texture. Make sure you've looked at the previous version of Node School, or Nodes for Noobs, so that you can easily follow along with this one. This is all part of a much bigger course on gabbit.co.uk where you can go right through from beginner to advanced levels and all the courses are free. Also if you've got questions you can get across to the Discord server, chat to like-minded people on there, take part in some competitions and we can try and answer any of your questions. It's worth mentioning that Zacharias Reinhardt recently did a talk at the Blender conference and he goes into a lot of detail of this process. So well worth having a look at that talk and I'll put the link in the description. Okay, so I'm going to start off very slightly differently and I'm going to use a beveled cube. So with your cube selected, go across to the modifiers and we'll add a bevel. I'm going to increase the segments to one and you can see what the bevel does. It takes off the harsh edges and curves them. I'll change it to smooth shading as well and I will also add a subdivision surface modifier and put the views up to two. Okay, so we've got a nice sort of smooth cube. I'm going to get rid of my timeline and bring across a new node editor. This is nothing new, so I'll rush through this. And I'll change the diffuse to the principal shader. Shift S to switch shaders, remember. Also, I'm going to put an HDRI in the background. So down to the world tab. Hook those up and then back to the object tab. I'm going to put a floor in and grab my cube in the Z1 so it's above the floor. The last thing I'm going to do is create a slightly complex shape just to show you the power of using these type of materials in this way. So all I'm going to do is inset a few faces so we've got a bit of shape. And both these objects will have the same material. Okay, so now I'm going to start and I just want to explain something about seamless textures. So I'm going to bring up textures.com. Textures.com is a great site for grabbing textures. You need to have an account, but you do get 15 free credits each day and you can get the smaller size textures for that, which is definitely suitable for most projects, but where you can, ideally you're using higher resolution textures. So there's a huge bank of textures that they have, and what I've gone for is one in the concrete section under rough, and this is concrete rough 0019, if you want to have exactly the same texture that I'm using, but any seamless texture will work with this. And the term seamless just means that it will repeat and you won't notice the seams down the side. This is the non-seamless version where this texture was taken from, and if we were to repeat this, you would see a marked line down the side where this side joins to the other side. Whereas in seamless textures, you won't see this. So I've got a group of seamless textures here, and here's my concrete rough, so I'll drag that into my project. I'll also, just for the sake of experiment, drag in the seamless grass and get that out of the way. So just to show what seamless textures do, I'll do it on the plane. I'll create a new texture and press Ctrl T over the diffuse to get up my texture coordinates. I'll open up with the double arrows my seamless grass and I'll change it to object. So this hasn't been unwrapped, but because it's object, it will project onto the surface. Let's see what that looks like in rendered mode. And it looks fine. Now if I scale this up, let's grab all these and do two. You can see that it has tiled, but it's seamless. We can't see the seam. If I put this up to, let's say, six, you can now start to see how it's tiled. And this is kind of what happens in older games where they're using a seamless texture on the floor. The light patches, the more you tile the object, will become visible, and the same with dark patches. But you still can't notice the seams as such, but you can notice that the texture is tiled. So that's something to watch out for with tiled textures. I'm gonna put this back to two. That looks like some nice grass now. Back to solid mode with Shift Z, and let's click on my cube and start playing with this. I'll get rid of the grass texture for now, and I will plug in our concrete texture, which is a rough concrete. Then I will press Control T over here. Remember, you must have the Node Wrangler installed for that to work, and change it to Object. So what does it look like at the moment? They both are projected onto the top, so they've got a flat projection and they're being stretched down the side. So with seamless textures you can change this from flat to box and that will do a box projection around the outside. Now there are limitations so with this object here, and that's why I chose to do an object like this, I'm just going to change across the, the GPU so we can see it a bit quicker. 
you can see that it will stretch down the middle here. So if this box was projecting the material onto this shape, it will stretch it down this area. What we do have is this lovely option of blend, and that can help us with any sort of overlap. There's not a lot of overlap here, but if this went backwards into itself, then there would be a bit of a glitch on the other side of this shape. So there are limitations to this box projection, but it does a great job as you can see. Let's just see what it looks like with the grass, so you can see it working with different textures. Looks a bit odd. And let's go back to the concrete. So we've got very sort of flat concrete, and we might want to change this into more of a sort of PBR looking material. If we want to do this, we can take it from one texture, and to get our PBRs, we need to use the roughness and the normals. There's no metallic in this case, so we won't worry about that. But we can take it from this texture. If you don't know much about PBRs, then do look at the links in the description, and they'll give you an intro. So let's start with our normals, Shift A, Vector, and just use a bump. If we're using a texture, we can use a bump, as hopefully you can remember from the last episodes, and plug that into the height, and the normal into the normal. And now we get a bit of bump. Now in order to adapt this, that's when we need to bring in our color ramp, just there. So remember you can press Control Shift in order to see the effects of that one texture, and you can see the bump and what it's going to look like. So you can sharpen that bump up if you like, and do all sorts. And Control Shift on your principal shader will get you back to rendered mode to see the entire material. And of course we can bring the strength down and so on. So what about the roughness? Well, we can go into the roughness. We can just duplicate our color ramp here. Have a look what that's going to look like. So the white bits will be rough, so full effect. The black bits will be shiny. See what it's going to look like. And we can start to see some reflections in our object. Doesn't look much like concrete at the moment. But that's not really the point. It's just showing you how you can create different materials with seamless textures. And lastly, what about changing the color? Well, you can probably imagine Shift A and in the color options, there's lots of options here. You can choose something like RGB curves if you're used to something like Photoshop. Pull up the reds, maybe pull down the greens to make it even more sort of pinky. And you can do all sorts like that. Or if I press Shift S over this and go to color, you can just go to the simple hue and saturation. And you can click through the hues. And of course you can change this to 0.15 or whatever it might be. But just clicking through will show you the different hues that you can get, and then you can start modifying that in more detail afterwards. 0.5 will get you back to the beginning. So that's probably enough for this episode. Hopefully from that you can understand how you can use seamless textures with a box projection using the object coordinates to create a basic PBR material. Now this is no real substitute for a good quality PBR, but it can be really helpful for creating materials really quickly. Do check out Zacharias Reinhardt's tutorial as well. He goes into a fair bit more depth and it's well worth a look. So thanks for watching and I hope that helps.